Hello everyone and welcome to this interesting session on crude operations in MongoDB. So we'll start off this session by discussing MongoDB's development and production architecture. Next we'll understand the read and write commands in MongoDB. So next we'll understand the read and write commands of MongoDB and we'll also learn how journaling works which is a very important part of crude operations. Now moving forward we'll use Mongo shell for performing the crude operations. And finally, we'll end the session with some demo depicting the various data types present in MongoDB. So today we have Morley who has years of experience working on the different types of databases, be it SQL or NoSQL. So over to you, Morley. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Data Welcome to MongoDB certification training. So here are the objectives. We need to discuss about what is the development and production architecture that we have. There are two environments that we have mentioned here. That is a development environment and another one is the production environment. In each environment, how your architecture looks like is going to be the first thing. Second, describe the read and write concepts of MongoDB. And we need to discuss about what is called journaling. So journaling is one of the main concept and use Mongo shell for your thread operations. Differentiate between the various MongoDB data types. So we are going to talk about the CRUD operations in the acronym for your CRUD will create, update, read and delete. Is how to create a database and how to create a collection, how to create a document. These three we are going to see here. After this, once you create the document, how to read it conditionally, both the things we are going to see. After this, if you already have a document or if you already have a database or a collection, if you think that something went wrong, you have entered the wrong data. I have to change the data now. Means I want to update the data. So updating a collection, updating a document, updating a database. Last one, I want to drop the entire table. So dropping a database, dropping a table, or dropping the individual document. These are the various things that we are going to perform in my MongoDB CRUD operation. One good thing with MongoDB is all the commands that I want to see within the MongoDB, you can see it right here. That is, the moment you hit all MongoDB commands, start either with DB. If it is a replica set, it will start with RS. If it is a sharding, it will start with SH. For now, I have only one server, right? I can call a single server as the standalone server. In a standalone server, all the commands are related to the database, and all the database commands are starts with DB. So if I say db dot and if I hit tab, these are all the commands that are part of my MongoDB. If it is a standalone server, I can absolutely use this particular one and I can make sure that what are all the various database commands that are available in the MongoDB. Now, I'm actually talking about creating a collection. Now you can see that just keep going one by one and at one particular point of time, you can see that db dot create collection. None of your database commands does not have any space. If the command is consists of more than one word, each word will start with capital letter. You can see here. It generally starts with the lower case. When a new word comes, the new word starts with the upper case. You can see here. Get starts with the lower case. Collection starts with the upper case. Name starts with the upper case. If you go with this particular one, start with the lower case, upper, upper, and upper. The MongoDB itself is case sensitive. You have to be very specific with the case. If you mess up with the lower case and upper case, that's it. The command will not work in a way that you are expecting. So with this, I want to go with creating a collection. If I want to create a collection, I can use a command called create collection. So what I'm trying to do is we can create a database by using the use. So I'm just going with the class one, use class one. That is, I'm creating a database called class one. Done. I'm within the class one now. Now I want to create a collection. So db dot create collection. So if you are not sure of what command you want to type, just if you know at least one letter, use that particular letter and enter tab. It is going to show you all the commands that are starting with the C. I want to create something. So I use CRE and hit the tab. So it said create, double tab, first one. I want to create a role, second one. I want to create a user, third one. I want to create a view, last one. I want to create a collection at this particular point of time. Just use capital C and hit enter. So parentheses they have closed. This collection should have name. The names are nothing but the string. All the time, the strings are always enclosed within the codes. I want to create a collection called EMP, employee collection. 
the moment i got any response like this okay one the meaning is it is successful mongodb does not have commit and rollback options unlike your rdbms so every time you are going to get an acknowledgement the acknowledgement is nothing but this is called write acknowledgement when you create anything when you delete anything when you update anything that is these three falls under write operations right the write operations are going to get a acknowledgement and that acknowledgement will be called it as the write acknowledgement so here is the write acknowledgement for me okay one yes you are good to go now show collections now i can see employee but this if i want to read the employee that is nothing but i'm just simply skipping to the read operation if i want to read it all i need to do is find out but does not have any data because i just created a collection but i have not inserted any data into it if i want to insert the data into it all i need to do is db dot your collection name dot find means read insert means insert itself in mongodb everything is a json document whether you are creating a collection whether you are doing anything in mongodb irrespective of whatever you are doing all of them are going to be a json document document is nothing but a json so i'm actually writing a json now every json will start with a flower braces and ends with the braces so this is the braces and within the braces i'm going to write my data so simply i can write key value pairs i'll write only one thing that is name of the employee name is the key string i'm entering that's the reason i'm using the double quotes suppose if i'm entering the age of that particular person i don't need to use course because it is not a string it is going to be the int either in 32 or in 64. let's say here is the age of that particular person before i got ok1 that is for creating a collection now i got right result you are writing something into the employee collection and your acknowledgement is will be number of rows inserted equal to one but here it is little typical when it comes to the mongodb even if you insert 100 documents now still you get n inserted as one that is n insert is nothing but it is going to be a boolean value either zero or one if it is one it is successful if it is zero it is so my insertion is successful that's the reason i got inserted as one now is the question i inserted only name and age but i got underscore id which is an object id why it is coming in mongodb we can insert the same data any number of times it is not going to consider that as a duplicate you can see the morally age 32 i have inserted five times and if i calculate that you can see that all the five records are same but mongodb is going to consider that as an individual records distinct records five distinct records the reason behind that will be each one's object id is different you can see here right b c d e f this object id is a 12 byte object id each byte has its own significance the last three bytes will be acting like a counter which will be incremental so this object id is the one which uniquely identify the record. If I want to know each record, the each record will be uniquely identified based on my object ID. If you create object ID on your own, MongoDB will accept that. If you don't create the object ID, MongoDB will create on its own to uniquely identify this particular record. For an example, in addition to this, I also insert an underscore ID I'm telling that the value of underscore ID is equal to one. The underscore ID value may be any data type of my choice. It may be an integer, it may be a string, it may be an embedded document or anything, but it should not be an array. Except array, any other data type will be accepted as the underscore ID. Now, the name is Murli, age equal to 32, and the underscore ID equal to one. Enter. Now you can see for the last one where I have inserted the underscore ID as a one, it has not created the object id because the user itself created it as long as the user creating the object id mongodb does not have an issue except the fact that if the user try to insert the same object id even with a different value let's say 33 and i'm just going with krishna so the record is different the name and age is different but the underscore id is same so user try to insert the underscore id with the same value system will not accept this now you got error message you can see that n inserted is zero acknowledgement it is a right error some specific code to that but it is telling that duplicate key error the meaning behind that would be your underscore id will not accept duplicates will not be a null which will be always distinct 
Can I simply say that your primary key in RDBMS is nothing but underscore ID in your MongoDB. It has almost same features of your primary key, but only difference is in RDBMS, it is mandatory that once you select it as a mandatory key, you have to insert the values there. You cannot simply leave it as a blank and system will create for you. But when it comes to the MongoDB, if you create it will accept, if you don't create, it is going to create on its own. That's the only difference. How it is able to identify the duplicate value that is called on your underscore ID, the default index is created and which is a unique index, which will not accept any of the duplicates. We want to see that TB dot employee dot get indexes of now you can see that on employee which is tagged with the database called class one i have an index name that is called underscore id underscore which has created on a key called underscore id since you have created a unique index on a key variable called underscore id it will not accept the duplicates so the first rule while creating your collection will be collection can have any number of fields of my choice Connection can have any number of documents of my choice, but only thing will be each document should have unique underscore ID, which will uniquely identify your collection. Either user can create it. If the user will not be able to create it, the system will create it for you, and it is going to create in the form of an object ID, which is of a 12 bytes object ID. Each of this particular byte within the 12 bytes have its own significance. So this is about creating a collection. There is another way. Now, the student collection, which is not created yet, but still I'm mentioning db.student, the collection which is not exist, and I'm trying to insert the data in the same way like how I inserted the data before. So name ABC, but the student collection is not available. But still, if I use the insert statement, if the collection is exist, it will append the data to it. If the collection does not exist, it will create and it will append the data to it. Still, it is telling that it is inserted. Let's go with the collections. Now you can see. And if I go for db.student.findout, it is going to display the data for you. You can ask me, Murli, this is the most easiest way to create a document. Then why we have the other one, that is db.create collection. The db.create collection will come up with additional detail. That is, in MongoDB, you have a special collection called capped collection. A capped collection is one, can be called it as a circular buffer. This, I can limit the number of documents and I can also limit the size. That is, I want to create a collection. That particular collection should contain only 100 documents at a time. If a 101 document I to insert, it has to remove the oldest document from this. What is the oldest document? The oldest document is nothing but my first document. The moment 101 comes in, the document number one will go out of my collection. When 102 comes into the picture, that is when I try to insert 102nd one, then obviously the oldest document now is going to be the second document that I have inserted that will go out of you. That is, assume this as a circle. In the circle, we are keep adding the data. The moment we add a new document, the oldest document that is present in the system will be go out of you. That is, I can limit my collection for number of documents. Second, if I keep loading the data, the size of the collection is keep increasing. Let's say that my memory is only 100 MB. Beyond 100 MB, I don't have the space. Now, I can restrict my size with 100 MB. That is, collection can hold the number of documents as long as the size is 100 MB. If more than 100 MB size, let's say that 80 records I have inserted, 80 records itself occupied 100 MB. When 81th record I'm trying to insert, the oldest document in the queue it is going to identify and it is going to delete that particular document and it insert the new document for me. But it will make sure that at any point of time, my collection will be having only the documents that I have specified and my collection will be having only the size that is specified. Within the boundaries, if I want to create a collection, then I can use the circular buffer that is your capped collection. Let me show you how to create this. Now, I'm trying to insert 100 documents in that. I'm just writing a for loop for it. EMP.insert. All of them has the same age. Let's say age remains same. All these people's age will be 33. But all of them has the distinct IDs. That is EMP IDs. So the EMP ID of that person starts with 1 and ends with 100. Now, db.emp.findout. 
Now you can see at any point of time, the MongoDB client will always display only 20 records at a time. So beyond 20, what it will do is, I have to use type IT. IT stands for iteration, the next iteration, the last iteration. After this, I don't get any ID because all the documents has been displayed. So now this particular collection has 100 documents. This is a normal collection. But now I want to insert in such a way that I want to create one more document. But at any point of time, it can accept only 20. Only 20 documents I want to insert. So for that, I have to go with the capital create collection. STD is the collection name. Just give some realistic name, something like cars. If I simply leave it as it, it is going to be a normal collection. But if I give some arguments here, the arguments are, I want to mention whether it's a capped collection or not. Capped true. The moment I say capped true, it is going to accept this as a capped collection. Next, I mentioned number of documents, right? As well as I mentioned size, right? So size, by default, I'm giving some thousand. The maximum number of documents that I can have will be, let's say 20. Created. Now, TB dot cars dot let me use the same instead of 1 to 100 let me go with 25 or just go with 21 maximum it can hold only 20 records the record will start with one and end with 21 db dot cars dot insert so ideally how many records it has to insert it has to insert 21 ideally but it's a capital collection the capital collection maximum number of documents I said is only 20 so that it will restore only 20 records when a 21st record inserted, the first record will go out of the queue. So if I insert this particular one now, it should have only 20 records. The employee ID starts with 2 and ends with 20. Let me use db.cars.find. So what is the assumption that we have? We are understanding that it should start with 2, that is employee ID should be 2 and ends with 21. At any time it can accept only 20, 1 to 20 it inserted. When I'm inserting the 21st record, the oldest record is going to be the first record and it will go out. It started with 2 and ends with 21. Let me insert one more record. Let's say cars.insert. I'm inserting a new record. Let's say age is going to be 34. I'm not telling whether the employee ID is there or not. I'm simply giving only one field. What will happen now? When a new record insert here, the oldest record, this will go out of the queue. Now the question is, how to know whether it, the collection is a cap the collection or not? If I know whether it is a capped collection or not, then I can do all this stuff. But how to know whether it is a capped collection or not? To check that, I need to find is there any command. DB double tap. Now there should be a document name called is cap. This collection, I want to know whether it is a capped collection or not. Is capped. Just I pressed is followed by tab. Now it is telling is cap. EMP is not a capped collection. We create it normally. So the output should be false. But cars is the collection which we created as a capped collection. So if I say db.cars.escapped. So escapped is the function which can actually help me to identify whether the given collection is a capped collection or not. Though you set up your environmental variables and everything, the first thing I need to do is every time when I want to start my daemon server, I should be in a place where my daemon server is residing. My daemon server by default, if I install and if I am in the Windows environment, it is going to be in your program files. So in Windows, each application will be having its own directory. So MongoDB has its own directory. Within that, the default path is it will go to the server. Within the server, it is going to have the version. If I have more than one version installed, all the versions will be having as one one folder. That is. If I have 3.4, because I installed 3.4, so it is showing 3.4. If I install 3.6 version, it is going to show 3.6. If I have more than one, all of them are listed here itself. So you can choose which version you want to start, followed by bin. Bin stands for your binaries. This is the place where your binaries will be. Now you can see, here is the Mongo binary that I'm looking for, Mongo B. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to clean up last week data. Data is the default data folder that I have used last week. So I'm going to log is the folder where I have stored the logs. So I'm going to clean them up first. I'm going to start the server as a fresh slate. So there is no reason for cleaning this. Just I want to start it as a clean server. That is the only reason I'm cleaning up, nothing else. 
So now if you see that I can have only the default binaries that I have got as part of the MongoDB package. So what we discussed, I need a MongoD. So MongoD is available here. So I don't need to do anything, but I need these two things. That is database path where I would like to store the data and I need to have a port number with which port I would like to connect my client with the server. So for this particular one, to have a database path, I'm creating one folder here and that folder is nothing but the data. So data is the folder in which I would like to store all the contents of my MongoDB. That is whatever my application would like to store the data, that particular data I'm storing in a folder called data folder. And if I don't mention anything, the log will be displayed on the screen. And once if I close my client or once if I close my server, the log also will get vanished. I don't have the track of what will happen and what might happen with my previous session. So to make it your debugging easy, what we need to do is we need to have one folder where I will store all my logs and such folder is nothing but logs. So I can name anything. So here I'm creating two folders. One is for storing the data that is nothing but the database path. The another is for storing the logs that is nothing but the logs folder created. So now the second one is also ready. That is, I have the MongoD, that is the binary is available. I also have the database path. Just now I have created the name is nothing but the data. And the last one, port number. I don't want to start with the default port number 27017. Let's say this time I'll start with a port number called 37017. Any number I can take between the 10,000 to 60,000. So let's take that particular one. So if I want to start my server in background at a new start forward slash B. In Unix, I simply use the ampersand at the end. But in Windows, if I want to start it in the background, I should start with start forward slash B so that it is going to run in the background. So I can utilize the same command prompt any number of times. Now, MongoD. The moment I say MongoD, it will say that, oh, the user is going to start a demon server. The system will understand that, followed by hyphen hyphen DB path. So every argument in MongoDB, if you would like to supply from the command prompt, it should be having two hyphens, or you can also call it as a minus minus. So this is going to be the argument. The argument value you're going to pass right after the space. That is argument followed by the your value. Second, I want to go with the port. So hyphen hyphen port followed by the value. Third, I want to go with the log path. That is nothing but I don't want to display my log on the screen. Instead, redirect that to the logs folder. But log is going to be a file, right? It is not a directory. I should mention the particular log name also. Since I'm dealing with a CRUD, I'm just simply putting CRUD.log. And I want to utilize this particular log any number of time. That is, whenever I'm performing the CRUD operations, I want to append the newly creating log in that particular file itself to make sure I'm using the same log again and again based on my requirement. I would like to give one option and that option is nothing but the log append. That is, start a daemon server in background with a database path of data with a port number of 37017, store the log into a logs folder and name it as the crud.log and use that log again and again. For that, I'm just enabling an option called log append. Let's run this. Done. Let's see whether it has started or not. In Unix, we have a feature of going with ps ef but unfortunately here we don't have that. So that's the reason every time we run it, we just go to the task manager and here we identify whatever the thing that we have initiated is running up. Now I can see that the daemon server mongod.exe is running here and the description of that is mongodb database server. So now we can say that the server is running, that is the server is up. Once the server is up, you need to connect your application to the server. So MongoDB is just a database where you can store all your data. But who is actually sending your data for you? The client is sending the data. The client is nothing but your application. 
I can simply say it as an application, whether it is a Java application or it is going to be your .NET application or any language. So these applications are going to supply your data. Now, at this particular point of time, we are not sure like how many of your Java resources, how many of your .NET resources or something. Since we don't have the clarity on it, what we can do is we can go with the default MongoDB client. That is how MongoDB is supplying your server to you. Similarly, MongoDB also supply a client for you, and that client is nothing but Mongo client. That is nothing but how you are having your daemon server like MongoDB as a binary. Yeah, MongoDB is also supplying a client for you to play with, and this is nothing but a Java powered shell, and the Java powered shell can be called it as your client. And that can be used as for our primary application. That is, if I go to this particular one and if I go for DIR, now I can see something called Mongo.exe. The Mongo.exe will be helpful, will be acting like a client for you, which is powered by using Java. That is nothing but all the Java and JavaScript related commands will work fine here. Let's use that particular one. That is, to connect with the server that is already running here to connect this particular server i need a client and that client is nothing but the mongo so by default if i simply put mongo it will try to connect to the server which is running on a default port the default port is 27017 but here since we used a different port number rather than your default port number so whatever the port number you used there that port number you need to mention so the port number that I have used is 37017. The moment I say Mongo port 37017, now it is actually take you from a normal window shell, which is in 3.4 and bin to a MongoDB enterprise. Still you are in a shell, but you are not in a default window shell. Now you are actually present in a, a MongoDB shell, which is connected to a default daemon server of 127.0.0.1, which can be called it as a local host, a local host server, which is running on a port number 37017, and there you have connector. Now you can say that you established a daemon server and you successfully connected to that particular daemon server with the help of a client. If it is a Java, you are going to have a separate setup, right? You need to write one class. With that particular class, you can connect to this particular server. If it is a Python, the same thing. If it is a .NET, the same thing. That is, each one has comes up with its own driver. You need to use those drivers and you need to use the programming language to connect this particular server. But when it comes to the MongoDB, simply you can connect to that particular server by using the Mongo followed by your profile. Now, we connect to the server with the help of my client. So here is the command that we have used for it. What is the command we have used? Simply we use mongo hyphen hyphen port 37017. This is simply creating a database server, then followed by once you create a database server, connect to the server by using the client. So two things are done. Once you connect to the server with the help of the client, now we actually go to your operations. So the first operation is create operations. Let's start one by one. So in the create operations, first we need to understand is the moment you connect to any database, MongoDB offers three default databases for you. The three default databases are nothing but the moment you use a command called show DBS, it is going to tell you what are the various databases that are present in this particular server. Now I can see that there are two databases it is displaying. One is your admin and another one is local. As long as you are using 3.4, that is all the versions prior to 3.6, I'll be having by default three databases. Name it as admin, local, and this. From 3.6 onwards, in addition to this, I have one more database called configuration database. When we are writing anything or only when we have set up for replication and sharding, then only your config database will be created. That too, the configuration database will be part of your replication or it is part of your sharding. But from 3.6 onwards, MongoDB has come up with an update and that update is that 
you don't need to store your configuration locally let mongodb itself is going to create a configuration for you and that configuration is nothing but the config database so no need to discuss much about the config database at this particular point of time because it will end up with the confusion because we don't know what is replication and we don't know what is called sharding at this particular point of time by default at a server level the moment you use a command called show dbs it is going to display all the databases that are present in the server only one condition is that database should have at least one collection so then only your show dbs will display that particular data or particular database so admin by default is going to have a collection called system.version so this is going to store what is the current version that you are using when it comes to the local the local is by default is going to have startup underscore log so it is going to start but it's going to store whatever the startup configuration with which your daemon server started with that information it is going to create one collection called startup.log so because of this particular reason because each one of them has at least one collection that is the reason admin and local will be displayed the moment you hit your dbs but the test it is the default database to which you always connect until and unless you override it with the database of your choice by default you always connect only to the test database but the test database is a fresh database it does not have any collection and that is the reason it is not showing up when you hit your show dbs how to know whether to which database i have connected to know to which database i have connected i can simply use a command called db db will tell you to which database you have connected now you can see that you have connected to the test database but why it is not displaying anything because it does not have any collections so the moment if i say the show collections it has to show whatever the collections that are present in the particular database but at this particular point of time the test does not have any data that's the reason it is not showing up under your show dbs at this particular point of time my test does not have any data i connect it to a database called test and the moment i go with the show collections it is not showing up anything because it's a fresh slate so now how to create a database to create a database all i need to do is use a command called use the keyword itself is use followed by the db name whatever the database name it is for an example if i say use reporting it is going to create a database called a reporting in the cred operation so what i'm going to do is i simply say use cred that is if i say use cred first it is going to see is there any database with a name called cred if yes it will switch to that if the system has not find any database with a name called cred then it will create a database called cred and switch to that so use will be having two options that is if the database already exists it can be used to switch between the databases so let's say if i want to switch to the admin i can simply say use admin then it will switch to the admin database if i want to go to the local i can simply use use local then switch to the local database now i'm using use cred the cred is not available but still the moment if i say use cred it is going to create a database called cred and will switch to that so this is nothing but creating a database so use can be helpful to create a database and switch to that particular database so now test used one or we just started with first thing that is creating a database so to create a database i'm going to use a command called use within the database how to create a collection in mongodb fortunately all the commands whatever the command functions or whatever you have here is going to start only with the three different keywords one if i'm hitting any database command it always starts with the db that is if i am dealing only with a standalone server as long as i have a standalone server it is nothing but a single database all the single database commands will start with db dot so just use db dot and hit your tab key two times then it is going to display you all the commands that are present within that particular database 
or within the particular MongoDB itself, entire MongoDB. So these are the various database commands that are available to you. Suppose you move to a replica set, that is nothing but you are dealing with more than one server and you are in a replica set configuration. You are in the replica set, just use RS dot and hit double tap. These are all the commands that you are using as part of your replica set. Suppose if you are in a sharded environment, SH dot. These are all the commands that you have within your MongoDB. So if you have a clear understanding about each and every command that is present on the screen, then you're good with MongoDB. That's all MongoDB has. So since we are in the very first level where we are started with just the single database and we would like to go with the creating the collection. So just I'm going with DB dot and double tap and I'm trying to figure out is there anything to create a collection? And I figured out that in the very first column itself here, I can see that DB dot create collection. Since I'm going with the DB dot create collection, I can simply use this particular one. MongoDB is case sensitive. Every keyword will start with a lower case and every new word within the keyword will be started with the upper case. That is create collection is the total command which starts with the lower case C but which has two words. The first word always starts with the lower case, but when it comes to the second word, it will start with capital C. Now, db.createCollection, close it, but I should give the collection name. Collection name is a string. Always the string must be enclosed with your double quotes. So within this, let's say I want to create a collection. At this particular point of time, I would like to create a collection called student. Any name I can give, so the moment I say db dot create collection, that is db dot create collection, and within the quotes I'm going to say what is the collection name. For every write operation, you are going to get the acknowledgement. For read operation, whatever the output is there, the output itself is the acknowledgement. So write means if you are creating something, if you are updating something, or if you are deleting something. For these three, you are going to get an acknowledgement. Here the acknowledgement saying that okay one that is it is true whatever the collection you want to create I have created it. So how to know whether it is created or not? We know that we can simply use use show collections. That is telling that yes we have one collection whose name is nothing but the student. So MongoDB has two different collections. That is it has two types of collections and one is the normal collection. The second one is the capped collection. Capped collections are really important when it comes to the performance. So wherever you are talking about the high performance and all, wherever your performance is really matters, or whenever you come to a department where you need to fine tune your performance, there and all, you are going to replace some of your collections with the capped collections. A capped collection is the one which can be called as circular buffer. Assume that if I call a collection as a table. The table is going to have some of the columns as well as the rows to that. Let's say I have a student collection. That is what just I have created. How many number of students are in the class? All the details I'm going to store here. Let us say I have 60 students here. All the 60 students names I'm going to enter here. I keep entering them. How many number of students are there? All the student names I'm going to enter. And those many records are going to be stored within my table. This is the regular one. But when it comes to the capped collection, capped collection will not work in that way. The capped collection is designed in such a way that it is going to store only the limited number of records that is specified by the user. The user say that create a collection which can store only 10 records or only 10 rows must be there. 11th row comes to the picture. Delete the oldest row that is present in my collection and insert a new row. At any point of time, I should have only 10. For an example, let's say I have created a capped collection and I say that only four records must be there. These are the four. Now, the user try to insert a new record and that new record is nothing but let's say more. This is the new record the user would like to insert. What is the condition? I can have maximum of only four records. But fifth record you inserted. I cannot say no, but what I can do? I can delete the oldest record. The oldest record is nothing but the first record. So let's remove the first record and again have only four records now. 
So whenever a new record comes to the picture, the oldest record will go out of the queue. For an example, if I insert one more name now, again, the oldest record now is going to be E, E will be deleted. If I say one more record now, again, the oldest record is R, R will go out of the collection. So a cavity collection is the one which will be a circular buffer and it can hold only the limited number of records that is specified by the user. It is not only about number of records, also about size. That is, it also have a fixed size. Let's say the user said that you can have a maximum size of 1000 MB. That is 2000 MB. How many number of records are inserting all those records it will allow? Let's say after inserting 10,000 records, now the size of the entire collection become 1000 MB. This is the specified limit. So now 10,001 record I would like to insert. According to the size criteria, it is not met. I can have only the maximum of 1000 MB. Let's say this record, the 1000, 10,001 record will be trying to occupy a space of 20 MB. 20 MB is the size of the first two records in the collection. So I'm trying to insert one record beyond the specified size and the size that I'm trying to insert is going to be 20 MB, which is equal to two oldest records of my collection. So what the system is going to do now, it is going to insert the 10,001 record, but the oldest two records it is going to delete because to meet my size criteria, I supposed to delete two records now. So after this particular insert, I'm going to have only 9,999 records, but the size is always lesser than or equal to the specified size of 1000 MB. So first we need to understand whatever the collection that they have created is a capped collection or a normal collection. To see those details, what I need to do is, I need to go with db.estudent, that is a collection name dot, the moment I say E is cap, if it is a cap collection, I'm going to get an acknowledgement as true. If it is not a cap collection, it is going to be false. So this I have created as a normal collection. The expected output now is false. Done. So I'm going to utilize a command here. That is, I want to know whether I have created a cap collection or not. To see whether the given collection is a cap collection or not, all I need to do is db.collectionName.eScap. The moment you use the is capped function, it is going to tell me whether the given collection that I have created is a capped collection or not. Now let's create a capped collection. So to create a capped collection, all I need to do is db.create collection. I'm creating a collection as student underscore new. Only thing is I just put a comma. After the comma, I'm going to display the properties. The first property is the capped must be true. In MongoDB, simply it is a JavaScript. Whatever I want to pass, I have to say what is the key. The key and the respected value must be separated by a colon. And if I'm passing more than one key value pair, each key value pair is separated by comma. That is more than one key value pair separated by comma. Now, capped is true. I have to specify what is the size. Let's say by default, the size I'm giving as 1000. And I also need to specify what is the maximum number of records it can store. I'm simply saying the maximum number of records it's going to store will be 20. That is the collection called student new. I'm creating it as a capped collection with a maximum size of 1000 and with the maximum records that is going to hold will be 20. Now let's go with whether it is a capped collection or not. Now it is telling that it is true db.studentNew is a capped collection, whereas db.student is a normal collection. But we need to test whether it is going to have the 20 records criteria or not. For that, what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to insert the data into both the collections. For an example, I created a collection. After creating the collection, I would like to insert the data into the collection. So I'm talking about inserting the data here, so when it comes to the inserting the data, the first way of inserting the data is db dot your collection name dot insert of. The moment I say insert of and within the insert of, 
I'm going to give the entire document. That is nothing but the JSON document I have to supply. So db dot collection name dot insert function. Within the insert function, I'm going to give the entire document. The document is nothing but the JSON. Now to insert the data, db dot student dot insert of. I said that within the insert, I'm going to supply my document. So whatever I'm going to keep within the flower braces is nothing but my JSON document. So we know that JSON document is nothing but any key value pair, one or more than one key value pair. If I keep it within the braces, that is nothing but my document. Let's say since I'm start talking about the student, so first I'm going to start with name. So name of the student, which is going to be a string. So I'm giving the name there. Let's say I want to give something like place to which place he belongs to. So let's say he belongs to Hyderabad. And I also want to give some number to that. Let's say I want to give a number called H. So I'm giving three key value pairs here. So each key value pair is separated by comma. This is going to form a document to me. So this is the document. So now enter. So N inserted is one. Even if you insert 100 records, you always get N inserted as one. This one is nothing but a Boolean value, zero or one. Zero means fail, one means inserted. So how to see whether the data is inserted or not? So first thing is I'm inserting the data to know whether the data what that I have inserted is correct or not, or whether the data that I have inserted is present or not. All I need to do is I need to go for a read command. That is nothing but I'm going with the third one that is read. By default, read can be done like this db dot the collection name dot find out find will display all the data that is present within my collection on the screen itself default standard output is screen that is on the screen itself it is going to display suppose if my document has 100 records all the 100 records it won't display in mongodb at a time cursor will always display only 20 documents if i want more than 20 documents i need to iterate that is go to the second loop iterate i have to use a command called it so it stands for iterate so the reason why we are using iterate will be mongodb is always going to display only the first 20 records that are present in the collection that is the first 20 documents if i want the next 20 i need to keep iterate that is, I need to use a command called id. Suppose if I want to display only one record, I can use db dot collection name dot find one. So the find one is going to display only one document. Let's say db dot student dot find out. So the find is always going to display all the documents that are present in that particular collection. For now, I have only one. You can see that something strange happened here. You could see there is a new key value pair called underscore id which you have not created in a second case i'm going to create one more record so let's say the name of the student is going to be krishna and age is going to be 33 this time i would like to play a little with the underscore id which was created by mongodb in the previous case this time i don't want mongodb to create let's create myself i'm giving some random name to that I am giving the name to that as 30. Enter. Still, it has taken. Now, db.student.find. Now you can see that the underscore ID, the MongoDB is not creating, and whatever you have created will be taken as the underscore ID. And you can see that the order always changes. That is, only underscore ID, wherever you have created, it always be the first one. So, how to read a database or how to read a collection? So, if I want to read a collection, all I need to do is db dot collection name dot find out it is going to display all the documents that are present within the collection second i said i want only one document just use one one now you can see it displayed only the first record that is present in your collection and one other good thing here will be it is displaying in a proper way because each key value pair it is separately showing you if you want to see the same one even with your previous thing that is all the documents that are present within the collection also i want to see today all i need to use is just use pretty function now two documents are there 
two documents will be displayed on the screen in a pretty way. The second one, it is not occupying much space. That's the reason it is still displaying on a single line, but it doesn't mean that it is not going to display continuously. I'm gonna insert at least five or six records, little longer records, then it is going to display on the screen in a pretty way. Now, I said there are going to be only 20 documents it is going to display in a screen. So to meet a particular contract, a thing, I'm going to insert first 20 documents I'm going to insert first. Just give me a moment, let me insert 20 documents. I'm writing simple for loop here. Let me insert 30 documents in the same collection called student. So for all of them, I'm simply displaying the name as some ABC and place also I'm making as a default, let's say some DEF, but only thing I'm going to change is age. The age part I'm going to change. Let's start the age with something called 20 years and the maximum age I'm mentioning as 50. For the second one, I use the comma. Now it inserted. So it ideally inserted 30, but as I mentioned before, it always inserted as one. Now let's go and see db.student.find. Now you can see from 20 I have started. So ideally I should have 30 records I have inserted. Already two records are there, totally 32 records will be there. But you can see that only the first 20 has been displayed here. These two and these are 80. Totally 20 records are displayed here. Now it is telling type IT for more. IT is nothing but the iteration. Now the rest of the records are displayed on the screen. MongoDB by default, it will not look at your screen size. It will always look at how many number of records I would like to display in each cursor output. By default, in each cursor output, the maximum number of records that I can display will be, by default, 20. If I want to display more than 20 records, that is the next 20 records, then I can always go with the iteration. So now you can see, this is what I mentioned before. So now, when I go for the pretty, it is going to display each and every record in a pretty format. Now, the same thing I would like to do for a capped collection. So this is a normal collection as many number of records that you would like to insert it is keep inserting there but when i want to insert the same let's start with 20 and insert 30 records but this time i would like to insert in the student underscore new the student underscore new is nothing but your second one that is nothing but your capped collection but by default the capped collection the maximum number of documents i have displayed as only 20 but i'm inserting 30 records now. let's see what we have I got acknowledgement as one that is nothing but inserted. Suppose if I go with db.stud.find off, first let's see the count. Just use a count function. So the maximum number is 50 now. Let's say 50 and let's go with 100. Now it ideally has to insert 50 documents. Let's see the count now. Only 16. So in that case, we might have put the maximum number as 16. That is the reason it is displaying only 16 records. Let's see one more time. Let's create a, one more capital collection because I'm not sure what is the maximum number I have displayed in the previous while creating the student underscore new. For that, what I'm trying to do is I'm going to create another capital collection. Let's say EMP. And I'm going to create this particular one, DB dot collection. Let's create this as a EMP. So the issue here is it is not about the number. I believe it is because of the size, the size that I have displayed. Now let's go with cap true. Let's go with size, some 10,000. Let's go with max. Let's go with around 20 this time. Create it. Instead of student underscore new, let's create it as EM. Then let's see the count. Now you can see 20. So ideally, I suppose to have the numbers where the age is varying from 50 to 100. Since I created the EMP as a capped collection, and I also mentioned that maximum number of records are going to be 20. So in this particular case, the maximum number of records it should have will be only 20. But the question is, which 20? So if I go to this particular one now, if I display the contents of this particular collection, it must have the documents where the age is varying from 81 to 100 because the last 20 only will be present. All the first 20s are going to be vanished. Only 20, 20, 20 can be hold. Ideally, it should hold 50 records, but 
since I mentioned the maximum number of documents as only 20, it is going to keep the recent 20 records and the oldest 30 records it has been deleted. Now you can see that as I mentioned, only the last 20, which is from the 81 to 100, will be present here. And the first, the, the records which are starting from 50 to 80, that is the first 30 records, has been vanished because I said that the maximum number of records it can hold only will be 20. So when the last set of 20 has been inserted, the first 30 records has been deleted from the key. So this is about creating a database, creating a server, creating a collection, and we also seen how to create a document. Let us go with the next command that is nothing but how to know the count. There are two ways. One, I can go ahead with db dot your collection name dot find of followed by you can give count as the argument. This the entire output of the find you are giving as the input to your count function. So now if I want to know the count, the way will be just go with your find. You can supply that entire output of your find as an input to your count function and you can do it. That is one way. The other way will be instead of using the find, you can simply use count. That is db.collectionName.count. It also equally works well with your MongoDB. That is, instead of using db.emp.find followed by the count, I can simply use db.emp.count. Still, it is going to display the account as 20. Suppose if I go with db.student.count, it is going to be 33. If I go with db.student underscore new, it is 16. So the count is the function which will directly give me the, the number of documents that are stored within the collection. So this is about the first part that is nothing but the create, basic insert, and basic read. Now we'll go more detail into the read part. That is nothing but what are the various read things will be there. This is infinite. There are n number of things that is displayed under the read, right? Let's go with the second thing. That is nothing but, let's say I have 20 records. I don't want to read all the 20 records. I want only the first to 10. In that particular case, I can all do is, let's go with the EMP because the EMP has the count from 81 to 100. So let's play here. So db.emp.find off, it is going to display all the 20 to me. But I don't want all the 20. I need only the first to 10. Use a function called limit. Within the limit function, just give the argument as how many you want to display. 10 I want to display. Only the 10. 81 to 90. So if I want to display only the specific number of documents from the beginning, in that particular case, I can go with limit. Limit followed by your number. So this is going to tell me how many number of documents I would like to display. Let's say I don't want the first 10. I want to skip the first 10 and display the remaining. So now from the 91, I suppose to see the data. I can use the combination as well. Now it is skipping the first 10 and is limiting the next 10, the remaining records to only five. That is, you want to skip the first 10 and you want to see only the five records from there. Yes, you can see. You can play around with this. So this is the basic commands. Let's say you have a huge collection. And I want to see so what kind of data I have inserted there. In those cases, I can use this particular one. Now, till now, we have not conditionally played anything. All we did is, whatever the data is there, get the data. Now, let's play the data conditionally. That is, I don't want all the data that is present here. For this, I'll just create another collection. Then we can play ahead with that. While creating the collection, I said that, you can use a create collection, then you can insert the data. There is a other way. That is, I don't even need to create a collection. Let's say EMP is the collection that is available. Student is the collection that is available. Student underscore name is the collection that is available. Since you created these collections by using db.create collection, once you create these collections, then you inserted the data into that. db.collectionName.insert. Instead of doing that, you can also do the other thing that is, let's say db.employee. This is the collection that I'm creating, which is actually not exist. Though it is not exist, I'm using that collection name and I'm using insert function. The beauty of this insert function is, though the collection is not exist, it will create a collection and insert the data into that. If the collection exists, it inserts the data directly. 
If the collection does not exist, it will create a collection and then it will insert the data into it. So I'm writing another for loop and this time what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give the employee details here. Let's say some EMP ID I'm giving and for the EMP ID I'm utilizing this variable called I for all of them. I'm just giving the default name called some name itself and followed by I want to give the gender information here. So the gender for 10 documents, I'm giving the gender as db.employee. So I have first 10 employees female data, the next 10 employees male data. So what I would like to do here is I want to play with this particular data very conditionally. It is don't display everything. Now I'm asking display only if the gender is yes. That is only female employees data. I would like to display. So whenever I want to get the data conditionally, I have to supply that particular condition within my find itself. And that condition is also a document. In MongoDB, everything is based on the JSON. Now you want to get only female data. The condition also I have to supply within my find itself. But here I want to give it as a document that is nothing but the JSON. So what is the JSON? JSON is nothing but any key value pair, one or more key value pair within the braces is nothing but a JSON. Now I'm telling that I need only the female employee data. So the female employee data can be recognized by using a key value pair called gender F. So gender F key value pair, if I keep within a braces, that is nothing but a document now, and that document I'm supplying as a condition. Now you can see only female data has come. The same I can play with the name. That is, if I want to conditionally give the data, the conditional data can be supplied within my find itself. Second, in addition to that, if I want to give more than one, that is, let's say simply I'm giving EMP ID and I'm giving 12. If I give more than one key value pair within my braces, by default, it is going to get a and operation between them. That is, it is trying to get a record or it is trying to get a document where my employee ID is equal to 12 and the gender name is equal to M. Only if both the conditions are matching, then only it is displaying the data to you. For an example, let's say EMP ID equal to 1 and gender equal to M. Not possible because the first gender cards are meant for only female. I'm going to get no output because there is an and operation exists between them. What I'm trying to establish now is the moment if I give one key value pair, it is going to give the matching records related to that. If I have more than one key value pair within my document, MongoDB by default is going to take an und operation between those key value pairs and it is going to get the data. Now we are just going with the new thing that is here. I'm trying to read the data based on the condition that is conditionally reading the data. To read the data conditionally, I have to queue my document again here. That is nothing but whatever the key value pairs you have mentioned here, with those key value pairs, I'm going to get the output. So play with this particular read operations. I need the data. This data is just only the employee ID. I need more data types. At the same time, I need little more data to write on the operator, R operator, and all those. So for that reason, what I'm trying to do is I have prepared one document. So this is the data I'm going to use. So what I'm trying to use here is I'm creating a collection called persons. I'm using the insert function within the insert function. I'm going to use the document. The document has multiple key value pairs. The first one will be name. The name again has two inbuilt key value pairs. That is nothing but this is an embedded document. The embedded document has first name and last name key value pairs. I have something called gender. I have year of birth, the person where he lives in. What are the various countries visited, which is in the form of an array. And I have a language. Language is an array which is having embedded documents. So this is the right mix of various data types. So this one I'm going to use for my purpose. That is for going with the CRUD operations. So let me copy this. I have multiple inserts. All those multiple inserts, I simply copy this. I can hit on the screen. Only 14 are there. 
So now if I go with db dot persons dot counter, there are 14 documents that are infected. This is the data that I'm working now. So now we can understand the usage of find one. So now you can see that in pretty good format, it is displaying that to you. So whatever I have here, I have the name, gender, year of birth, lives in, countries listed is an array, and you have language, which is also an array, but which is having the embedded document. That is each document with the multiple key value values. So this data we are going to use for our read operations. That is nothing but for all the thread operations. So create part we have already done. Insert part we are here. There is another way of inserting this as well. So that is called bulk insert. I'm going to show that how we can go with the bulk insert as well. That is instead of writing these many number of insert functions one after the other, the other way we can do will be, now we can see that it is giving a different result to me. That is, now you can see the number of inserted documents are going to be two because I use the bulk insert. That is, instead of writing one, one insert function like this, one insert function here, Again, for the second document, another insert function. For third document, another insert function. Instead of doing like this, what I'm trying to use is, I'm going to use only one insert, that is only one function I'm going to use. Within that function, how many number of documents are there? Each document I separated by a comma, and I supply that as a one array. Let's say that all this, that is from here to here is one document. From here to here is the another document. So now I have two documents. The two documents I separated by comma. I keep it in one array, and this entire array I just use in the insert, so that it becomes a bulk insert to me. I can have any number of documents. Let's say now I have 14 documents, right? All the 14 documents I can insert with a single insert function. That will be call it as a bulk write. That is what I have shown. It is a bulk write have inserted two documents in one switch. So both of the things will be working fine for you. Suppose if I go with db dot persons new dot find off, I'd obviously show you the two documents. Just use pretty. So now you can see that up to this is going to be the first document. This is going to be the second. So this is called bulk insert. So if I want to go with the bulk insert, use only one insert function. Within one insert function, can have your multiple documents separated by commas, and all of them keep it in one array. Let's go with thread operations. We are into the read now. So conditionally, we want to read the data. So to conditionally read the data, what we did is we just have created one of the collection, and that collection will be db dot your person dot find out. This is going to be the collection with the 14 records. So now we are going to play with this particular one. So what we are going to do is we are going to take help of some basic Java variables here. That is, every time when I'm writing some condition, I need to see how the data will. Let's say year of birth, O is capital, B is capital, gender, no, nothing is capital, country which are V is capital, like that. I need to do the exact names, then only I can get the data. So what I'm trying to do is whatever the output of your db dot persons dot find one i would like to keep it in one variable that is environmental variable for an example say a is equal to any name you can take and db dot persons dot find out but this is not the outcome i'm expecting what i'm expecting is instead of find let you find one that is find one is the output that i'm continuously referring to Whenever I want to write a new query, I want to see the variables and data. To see the variables and data, I don't need to go with all the 14 documents. Instead, if I look into one document, that is more than enough. For that reason, what I'm trying to do is, whatever the output of db.persons.find1, I just keep it in a variable called a. That is, I don't need to hit the entire command every time. Instead, I simply hit a. I'm going to get the same one. This is the one thing. So why I'm using this one will be, Every time I want to refer this, to refer this particular one, I just store the output of your db.persons.find1 into a handy Java variable that is nothing but the A. Now, let's go with the previous example where this 14 document, I want to display only male record, the where the gender is equal to yeah. That is nothing but db.yourpersons.find out. So here, I suppose to give the condition the condition must be in the document mode that is nothing but the JSON mode. So gender and the value of the gender is equal to yeah. db.persons.find generally give you the complete output. 
But now within the find function, I'm giving the gender value gender m. Now you can see I got only the records where the gender equal to m. So gender is m here, gender is m again, gender is m, gender is m. But every time it is difficult for me to figure out where the gender is. So what I need to do now, I don't want this clumsy output. Since I'm taking only the data for the gender m, I would like to see whether whatever the data that I have fetched is correct or not. So to validate the data, what I'm doing is in find the first one, whatever you are going to get here, the very first braces, the first braces is always for the selection. That is, what is your selection criteria? The selection criteria is here. Then the projection criteria, that is nothing but once you have selected what you want to fetch, you can project this. That is, if I go for the SQL equivalent of this, so first you are going to write select star from your table name where you are going to write all your conditions. This whatever is the conditions part is nothing but the first braces. The first braces is only for the conditions part. Then under the select, now it is going with the default star. I don't want to go with the star. I want to go with the selected columns. For an example, since it's a person's collection, I would like to have only gender. I want to see only the gender. Then I'll see whether the gender is fetching correctly or not. Then I'll proceed with the rest of the stuff. So now this is nothing but your projection, right? Projection can be done in the second braces. That is just use comma, go with the second braces. In the second braces, just mention what variables you want to see in your output. I want to see gender in my output. If I want to see put one, if I don't want to see put zero. So now what is the outcome of this? In your previous case, I got all the key value pairs that is presented within my output. Now, fetch only the records that are matching with the male condition, that is gender equal to M. But in the output, don't display all the columns. Display only gender. DB dot persons dot find of gender M. It is there. Now I need to go with the selection. The selection is going to be gender one. So now we can see that all other has been removed, but underscore ID has not. Only when it comes to the underscore ID, I need to forcefully quit that. That is, I need to make sure that underscore ID is zero. Then only it will work. So now we can see that your output previously db dot persons dot gender m, but I don't know whether this output is correct or not. I want to clarify that. For that, I restricted the output with selecting only the gender variable there. So only gender is getting displayed. And again, I also selected that underscore ID equal to zero. So that the only gender information will be displayed on my screen. So there are five records that are matching with my gender M. So obviously, if I go for the F, I should get nine records. I want to see the count, simply put count down. So now you can see that. By using the conditions, I can always go ahead and I can restrict my output in a way I want. Now, again, I'm going to hit A. A, I'm not getting the output because I quit, because I exit from the shell. The moment I exit from the shell, all the environmental variables will be vanished. The value of A will be remains as the output of your db dot persons dot kind of as long as you are in this particular shell. And as long as we are not overriding this particular value with any other value. So this we this command we have hit, but unfortunately I use the control C. So I exit from the queue two minutes before. So that's the reason A value got vanished. Now again, I'm taking the value of the A. So now it is the value. Now I use this particular one and we have played with this. Let's use a number variable Let's use a numeric value and try to apply some conditions in it. For an example, instead of going with this particular one, let's say I would like to see all the people whose year of birth is greater than 1970. Let's go with equal to first, where the year of birth is equal to 1962. So in this case, only the first record has to come or all the people who are born on 18, 1962 has come. Now you can see. Year of birth 1962, year of birth 1962. So if I want to use the equal to, I can simply put that value as it is, except the equal to. If I want to go with any other value, 
for an example i want to know all the people who born before 1918 that is nothing but lesser than 1918 for those i have to write the operator that is as i mentioned in mongodb all the operators will start with dollar so dollar gt will stand for the operator so let's use the particular one so now what i have did is the people whose age is greater than 1980 so the people who are born before 1980 are here the people who are born after 1980 are here so i can use the equal to i can use less than or equal to less than or equal to means lte greater than or equal to means gte in means in not in means nin if i want to know all the operators that are using in mongodb the best place you can see here will be go to mongodb.com not only for this for any reference that you need to have go to docs go to server under the server just go down a little you can see mongodb crud operations click on that so here you can see few of the things but not in the detailed way but what i would like to show you is under the references you have something called operators under the operators you need to go with query and projection operators because we are doing the query and projection right so here you can see equal to greater than greater than or equal to in less than less than or equal to not equal to not in we want to see the logical operators and not or not we are going to discuss them as well exists type you can see all the operators that are present within the mongodb you can see here that is nothing but just go to references under the references go to operators and you can see all the various operators that are present in the mongodb that is if someone want to know or if someone want to refer all the operators that are present in the mongodb this is the place where you can run so just as a reference but most of the stuff which are useful which we are using in day to day work all of them i have already placed this document will be more than sufficient but still if you want to go clear vision on what is happening then you can use this particular page so if i want to have anything with respect to my character information that is nothing but the string i can directly use it if it is not a character if it is not a string if i want to play with the number i can play with that particular number here and one more thing is if i want to have more than one value here that is nothing but year of birth i would like to see at the same time i would like to see the name also just put name one now you can see the names there in addition to this i want to see the gender just put gender one in reverse way i don't want to see like this instead x i need all the data except the fact that i don't want the name i don't want the gender and i don't want underscore id in this case except these three fields the rest of the data i'm not taking it is completely your choice what to display and what not to display so the first parenthesis is for the selection whereas the second parenthesis is for the projection now let's complicate this a little these are the very simple ones so what i need is if i look into this particular one i need all the people where the first name is harish so i'm going with an embedded document within the embedded document i'm talking about the first key value pair so whenever you want to do like this there i need to use the dot operators or i can also call it as the dot notation the dot notation is nothing but whenever you want to link the internal name of your array or internal name of your document that is embedded document you are going to use the embedded value that is it's a db dot persons dot find of so now i want to know all the people where the first name is harish so name is the first one dot the dot is going to tell me inner value i'm just navigating to the path so the second thing will be first so i'm telling the system that name dot first is not going to be a single name it is going to be two names combination both of them separated by a dot notation and whose value is going to be harish before when i use name or gender or year of birth it directly work but now the moment i use this particular one it throw you an error the reason behind that will be it doesn't know what is called name dot first so now you need to tell that name dot first is a single name that is it's an inbuilt name to make sure that i have to keep that name value in the double quotes in general the first one is key second one is value 
a value is a string that you are going to enclose that within the quotes. But the key also will be enclosed in the quotes when you are using a dot notation. So here I'm using a dot notation. Now you can see that I got the name. The reason behind that will be whenever I'll go with the dot notation, in the dot notation, I always have to use the double quotes. So the same is going to be the case with languages also. Suppose if I want to go with languages, again within that where the language is equal to where and all Hindi is there, I want to know all those details. In this particular case, how I need to proceed, I'll tell you. Before that, let's start with an array. Suppose I want to know all the people where the first country visited is India. That is, I'm matching on the first element. So array is nothing but I'm going to have array name followed by elements of the array. So the elements of the array in MongoDB and in Java in general will start with zero. Let's say I have one, two, three, or let's say Murli, A, B, C, D, e, F. If I want to know Murli, the Murli is nothing but the element number zero in the array. Element zero is Murli. Element one is going to be A, B, C. Element two is equal to D, E, F. That is, I totally have three elements and the element numbering will be starting with the zero. So in this particular case, if I want to write a condition, let's say db dot person dot find off, but here I want to have a match on if the person that the country is visited dot zero. That is the first country visited is India. So how to know whether it is correct or not? Cue the projection. Let's say underscore ID I don't want and I want only countries visited. Now you can see only if the first country visited is India, only that particular person is coming. Out of 14 documents, I have one, two, three, six, eight. Only eight documents has come. The remaining people has not entered into this output because where they might not visit India at all or the first country of visit is not India. Now you can see all the people who visited India. This record is the difference because here, the country visited India is not on the first list. This person has visited India, but it's the first country of visit is not India. So this record has not come to the output. Suppose if I want to bring this output alone, that is one, two, three, four, fifth element. That is fifth element is nothing but element number four. Suppose if I give countries visited dot four. Now, whatever we have missed now, only that one has come to my output. The reason behind that will be, only that particular person has visited India as a fourth country of his visit. Remaining all people has the different thing. So when you want to play with embedded document, the embedded document will be like the main name followed by embedded name. When it comes to the array, array name dot element number. Now go with the third one. That is a combination of these two. We tried this, we tried this. Now we are trying an array. The array has embedded documents as the elements. That is, I want to know who and all knows Hindi, where name.hindi exists, all those records I want. But the problem here will be, Hindi is an embedded document, which is part of an array. So now, if I want to write here, so db.persons.findoff, so let's say languages is one, and here, languages, dot name and hindi only if i want to know the first language of hindi that is the persons where the first language must be hindi in that particular case i can use dot zero that is only if the person has the first element in your language as a hindi then i can use this particular one language dot element number when I don't want whether it is a first name or whether it's going to be the first choice or second choice or any choice, but if the persons know Hindi, then get all those details. In those cases, I can go ahead with the, without the element number, simply can give element name, that's array name dot your subname, just like your embedded document. So these are the basic differences between how to use your embedded document, array, again, go ahead with the embedded array document. We know how to play with the embedded document. Now we know how to play with the array and we know how to play with if the array is having embedded documents as the elements. So let's go with the other stuff that is in operator. For that, what I'm gonna do is, so here we can see lives in. 
So this person, Harish Chandra, is actually living in Mumbai. If I go with db.cons.findoff, I can see there are multiple lives in. Here you can see this person is living in Chicago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a projection. All I need is only lives in. There are people who are living in Mumbai. There are people who are living in Jaipur. For an example, I want all the people who are living either in Mumbai or in Jaipur. Only the people who are living either in Mumbai or in Jaipur. So how to write it? I need to go with more than one operator or more than one condition. So here I have two options. One, I can go with in operator or I can go with the R operator. I will tell you both the scenarios and tell you how to differentiate both of them. So first I'll go with the first one. So I would like to see all the people who are living in Mumbai. I want to see only the data. I don't want any other information. So I'm just keeping all other stuff as zero. Now I'm going with the condition. So what is the condition now? So in general, if it is only one place, let's say only Mumbai, this will give me the output. If it is only Jaipur, now the combination, I need to get four records. But on the same variable, I'm going with the conditions. So when I'm going with the same variable, all I'm going to do is, so here, I'm going to use in operator. If I want to use the in operator, I'm just using another document here. So in, these two are array, right? These two are going to be the same variable, but array elements. So simply, the array elements, I'm separating by comma, and here I'm writing by type. Let's remove the projection to get the complete data. Now you can see lives in mumbai lives in jaipur lives in mumbai lives in jaipur so how you get this to this particular one all we did is lives in here ideally only one value will be there this value i just replaced with an in operator in the in operator since i am working on a single variable single key all the values are separated by comma and i just use the in operator in means either this or this our condition our condition within a single variable will be in operator suppose if i want to write the same with the r operator i can still write it so how can i write that is this is going to be the projection so now first start here so going with r so r is going to have an array the first one this is going to be the second one both of them are the elements of your array that is uh, two conditions r operator followed by you have your projection lives in one underscore id zero now same output i got so when to use our operator and when to use in operator both of them are giving me the same result the only difference is as long as i'm working on a single variable but with the multiple conditions go ahead with the in operator suppose i'm going with different things that is a person living in mumbai who is born or whose gender is equal to yes so now i'm getting all the options whether the person is living in mumbai also i'm going to get at the same time the person whose gender is equal to f any one condition satisfies if i need the output then i can go with the r operator all the people who are living in mumbai i'm getting here one two these two are the people who are living in mumbai why other records has got because all the records are satisfying with the condition where the person has the gender called female Suppose if I need a and operator now, that is, I need all the people who are living in Mumbai and whose gender is equal to M. Only if these two conditions satisfies, then all I need. So here is the data. So this is how either I can use and operator for matching more than one condition or more than one variable. I can go with the R operator if I want to match two or more conditions on completely different variables. I can use the in operator when I want to go with more than one condition on a same variable. In those cases, I can go ahead with the in operator. So if I want to match all the operators and on a same variable, if you want to see, you can go with the all. So here, if I use all, then it will find all the people who are living in Mumbai and Jaipur, but which is not possible, right? The person has only one lives in. Suppose if I go for this particular one, I'm going to get the output as zero, no records. But if I want to get an and operator on the same variable, I can go for the lives. For an example, so countries visited, I'm using all, I'm using India and Singapore. So now just use countries visited here because it is the only one which I have the matching data. 
So now what I'm trying to do is any person who visited India and Singapore both, only that person I want. This guy, let's say in the name also, Harish Chandra is the person who visited both India and Singapore. Whereas there is another person, Shailesh Sharma, he also visited India and Singapore. Now you can see that on a same variable, if I want to bring and operation, then I can use all. All is going to be act like a and operation in a single variable, but more than one time. Now let's go with a little more complicated stuff. So here, what I need is, I need all the persons whose proficiency level as fluent in Hindi. That is, you can see here, languages, under the languages, for each language there is a proficiency level. Hindi is fluent, English is fluent, Sanskrit is intermediate. Now, I need all the people where the level of proficiency for Hindi must be fluent. So let's write a query. So let's say db dot persons dot find out. So anyways, I'm writing a condition on more than one variable. Obviously, I need to have a and condition there. So I'm just going with and. And must be having more than one condition. So I'm writing more than one condition here. And the condition is going to be languages dot name is must be Hindi. What is the second one? The second one is going to be languages dot proficiency. The proficiency level must be fluent. I got some output. Let's validate that out. I'm giving a projection. The projection, all I need is I don't want underscore ID, but I need languages. Check, check whether your output is correct or not. Hindi fluent. If I go to the second one, you can see that the Hindi is intermediate. The second record is not correct. But the reason why we got this one will be this is the biggest problem while we are dealing with the arrays. When we are dealing with the arrays, when you are having more than one element, and when you are trying to tie between the elements, it's a difficult task. That is what I'm trying to say here is, this record got hit, let's say skip one and limit one. Now I got the record that I want. Now you can see the proficiency level here will be for Hindi is intermediate. Why I got this record is, it is looking for languages.name is Hindi. So it is going to this record. Here I have languages.name is Hindi. The first condition is satisfied. Within the same record, it is also looking for languages.proficiency is fluent. And the language.proficiency is equal to fluent. Since both of them are present within the same record, it fetches it. This is the problem with the array. So whenever you have this kind of stuff, you need to go for array operators. And specifically, I need to match the elements of an array. That is, don't match the entire array. This is not your work now. Match only the individual elements. That is, go for the individual element of an array. Within the individual elements, just check the proficiency level as well as the language level. Then only your output is correct. So to do that particular one, I need to use an operator called element match. Element match is on two things again. What are them? Element match name to the proficiency needs an object. So now we got the data. Let's validate whether the data is correct or not. But we have written for Hindi. Let's go with the Hindi. So Hindi and fluent. Now let's check individual ones. Let me remove the pretty and check now. Let's say Hindi proficiency is fluent, Hindi fluent, Hindi fluent, and Hindi fluent here, Hindi fluent here, Hindi fluent here. So what exactly it is doing here is I'm telling the system that don't blindly match it. Match it on individual elements. So go for an individual element. Within the each element, just check for the value of name Hindi proficiency as fluent. If these two conditions are getting matched on each and individual element, only then pick the value. So when we are using element match, the element match that we are using, only when individual element has the matching record, then only confidently print the data. In other cases, don't bring it. To make sure that particular one, we are using the element match. Let me go with the next thing that is nothing but how to update the value. Update is going to have only one extra field. For an example, so if I want to read it, I'm using find. If I would like to insert, I'm using the insert. Now I would like to update. For update, I'm going to use update function followed by whatever the value I would like to set. For that, I have to set the value as dollar set. For an example, in my document, for all the people, their year of birth is equal to 1962. 
if the year of birth equal to 1962 i would like to set the new field as married and i would like to give the value as y for an example db dot persons dot find out so this is 1962 if you look into this none of them has a field called your married married option is not there i want to know the martial status the martial status is not available there because that field itself is not there now i would like to set that particular field now so to set that particular field what i'm trying to do is i would like to update i would not like to update for everyone but i would like to update only if the condition is getting matched here and the condition that would like to match here will be year of birth once the year of birth is matched then i want to go with the second one that is nothing but i want to set the data so if the person year of birth is equal to 1962 the first one is always selection in the second one i'm putting a set operator now the set operator is actually putting the value as y now you can see that number of elements matched equal to one number of elements modified is equal to one now if i go with the same condition of 1962 now i got the additional thing here and that additional thing is nothing but married is equal to y but if you look into this one more time i got two matching records but it has been updated only to one only the first one has married the second one does not have so if i want to update for all first i will unset this when i unset it i don't get the data set is for setting a variable that is adding a variable unset is for removing that particular variable but whether you are using a set or whether you are using the unset it will work only for the first matching document but for all the matching documents if i want to update it then i have to use one more condition here and that one more condition is nothing but multi is equal to true so first one is as usual selection the second one is going to be the set and in the set itself i'm giving one more condition that is called multi equal to true it's completely outside of your third parenthesis for you in the third parenthesis i got two matching records for both the matching records i have updated the value now you can see that modify equal to two now if i go for the condition that is fetching the data is supposed to see married equal to y for both the documents that is as long as when it comes to the update update always will go only for the first document if i don't mention multi equal to true if i mention multi equal to true then it is going to update all the matching records so this is about your update the same thing will be happen even if i want to wrongly enter the value also i can correct it for an example it's not supposed to be married equal to yes that is let's say first fetch all the married equal to yes for all married equal to yes now for the same variable the married status has been changed from yes to no so what i'm trying to do is first one if i would like to add a new variable i'm using set the set will check for that is the first set will check for whether that particular variable is present or not if it is present it will update the value if it is not present it will create and update the value for an example for all the people where the married status is no i would like to create a new variable and that new variable will be married status and i'm saying the married status equal to no the married status variable is not available it is not there so the system is going to create it and it is going to update it now you can see that there are two matches found and both of them i have updated you can see no now what i would like to do is okay whatever you did is correct but i wrongly entered it is not no it is going to be yes i'm just like yes so now the variable is already available that is married status variable is available but i would like to update the value of that particular key to yes the married status before it was no now it has been updated to yes so this is about your update let's go to the remove the same condition i'll take db dot persons dot remove remove is the function which can be used for removing the documents let's say let's remove all the people where the gender is equal to here you can see that i'm not keeping multi equal to true or something but i'm just giving only the condition by default it removed nine that is it is the reverse of your update as long as you don't mention any argument all the matching conditions it is going to remove for an example now i have only male record so under the male we have five records i'm simply putting comma one now you can see that only one record has been removed 
if I go for the data, I should have four records which are matching with the main. I can see only four. Suppose if I go with the remove one more time, suppose if I put two or three or anything, it doesn't mind. It is always considered that whatever the value I'm going to give after my remove, it will consider that value as either true or false. That is, if I don't give any number, that is nothing but zero, it considered as a false. So it is going to remove all the matching conditions. If I give any number here as a one, two, three, four, or any number, it will be considered that as a Boolean value of one, that is true. Now, I already have three records. If I remove this particular thing one more time, one more record has been made. So, multi equal to true, update all the matching conditions when it comes to the insert or update. Whereas in remove, if I don't mention anything, it is going to remove all the things. But if I mention comma any numeric value, that numeric value it will be considered as the Boolean value of the true and it is going to remove only the matching records. For an example, if I look at db.persons.findout, I have still two records. Now, I don't want to match the individual records. I want to drop the entire table itself. That is the entire collection itself I want to drop. So now db dot persons dot the moment you say drop and you get the acknowledgement as true then that particular collection itself no more available. There is no collection called persons because that particular thing itself drop. For example if I'm dropping student underscore new now true. Now if I go for the collections that is no more available. So like this I can create a tape collection either as a normal collection or a capital collection. I can insert the data into that particular collection by using the insert. If I want to update, I can go with the update. If I want to remove the individual documents, I can go with the remove. If I want to drop the entire table, I can go with the drop. Thank you, Morley, for this wonderful session. I hope you guys understood the different aspects of crude operations in MongoDB, how to perform read and write operations, how to perform the read and write commands, and I hope you understood the different data types present in MongoDB as well. So in the upcoming session, what we'll understand is how the read and write mechanism actually works. We'll understand the write performance, the distributes writing, and much more in depth. So stay tuned to this channel. And if you have any queries regarding this session, please feel free to mention it in the comments section below. Till then, thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it, and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!